if you're a professional looking to up-level your skills with data, you want to have more impact at work by using business analytics, this is the video series for you. This is part one of exploratory data analysis with Excel. Throughout this tutorial series, I'm going to take a data set and walk you through the process that I use personally in my hands-on work as an analytics professional to explore a data set, uh, formulate business questions, and then go look at the data and see if I find any patterns or any associations with a thing that I'm interested in, that business question. So a little bit of housekeeping. This video will be a little bit longer probably than some of the others, and that's simply because we need to get things set up. So first of all, in the description below, there is a link to a GitHub. So every single one of the worksheets, workbooks that you see in this video series will be uploaded to that GitHub. So you can go and grab them anytime you want. You can grab part one or part, I don't know, 13, whichever, however long this goes. I'm not quite sure at this point. So you can get the files. So the link's in the description below. Second, and this is important, the subject of this particular video series is exploratory data analysis that doesn't have a time component. So for example, you grab a bunch of data about your customers from your database, let's say, and put it into Excel. Those customers are just, you know, like they have static attributes like their name and where they live and how much product they've bought and things like that. If you're interested in analyzing business data over time, so for example, sales or expenses or your digital ad click-through rates or your conversion rates on your website, that sort of thing. I have a video dedicated to that. I call that KPI analysis, and you can just check that out up here. But don't click on it just yet, okay? It's there at any point you say, hey, this video isn't for me. It's not what I really want to do right now. So there we have it. That's the housekeeping. So first thing that we need to do is go to Excel and enable something known as the data analysis tool pack because that is super awesome. So let's go, let's go ahead to Excel right now. Okay, you can see here that I'm in Excel. This is the data set that we will be using through the entire series, but we're not worried about that right now. What we wanna do is enable the data analysis tool pack add-in in Excel, and this works for both Windows and Mac versions of Excel if you have a modern version. If you have an old version on, on uh, Mac, then it won't work. But if you have like 365 or two, 2019 versions of Excel, you should be good to go. So the data analysis tool pack is an awesome add-in that provides a bunch of really cool features for us to use to analyze our data, to explore our data. So let's go ahead and enable that. So how we do that is we go up here to File, and we click on File. And then way down here, we wanna to go to Options. And that brings up a nice dialog called the Excel Options dialog. And what we're interested in is add-ins. So you go all the way down here to add-ins and click on that. And we want to manage our Excel add-ins down here. So we're gonna go ahead and click on Go. And that'll bring up a little dialog here. And there's a bunch of different add-ons. The solver is really super awesome. I might do some videos on that some other day. But right now, all we're interested in is this first one here, Analysis Tool Pack. And click that. Check check the box there, and then click OK. Now, you don't notice a change, except for if you go to the data section of the ribbon here, the data section of the ribbon, and click on that, you'll notice that way over here, you now have a new subsection of the ribbon, of the data ribbon, called data analysis. That is the analysis tool pack, and this is awesome. We are going to be using this in this video, and we will likely use it in additional videos later on as well. So we've got the analysis tool pack open. That's awesome. That's our infrastructure. The thing you have to remember is that the power of your exploratory data analyses are not a function necessarily of the tool that you use. We're gonna use Excel in this video series. I also use the R programming language as well. What you see here in this video series is the exact same thought process and mostly the same techniques that I use when I use R in, instead of Excel. R just has some additional benefits that you just don't get in out of the box Excel, but we'll talk about that at some other time. So the important thing is that you, as the data analyst, as the business person applying your knowledge of what's going on in the business and trying to figure out what the data tells you about that, that's the most important thing. It's not the tools. It's 
what, how you execute the analyses, what you bring to the table as the analyst, that's most important. And second, of course, is the data. You can't, if you have no data, there's no way to get insight. So those two things are most important. The tools doesn't matter. So what we're gonna be focusing on in this video series is the thought process, the ideas, the concepts, the kinds of analyses that we, that we execute to, to derive insights from the data rather than focusing on the tool itself. So you're gonna hear me say this so many times throughout this video series, and it's super, super important. When you're using exploratory data analysis in the business analytics space for analyzing business data, the single most important thing that you need to keep in mind is a question. If you wanna use a fancy term, a hypothesis, but basically the same idea, you want to have a question. You can think of exploratory data analysis as this kind of this organic, natural thing where you just sit down with a table of data like this and just start looking at it. And you can do that. However, in business analytics, my experience has universally been that if you wanna have maximum impact, you wanna focus on a business question first and foremost. The business question is the critical thing. And this might be a bit controversial, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it anyway. If you don't have a business question, you should really stop and ask yourself, why am I doing this data analysis? Business questions provide context, they provide ROI potential for your data analysis, and you should always have one, always. And sometimes maybe it's a business question that you're that you want to investigate because it's related to another question that really interests you. So for example, uh, you're interested in understanding how your digital advertising spend drives paid conversions. So you might go then say, well, okay, well, what ads typically have the best click-through rate? That question, that sub-question rolls up to the higher level question. And that's okay. That, kinds of, that kind of thing is totally reasonable and totally expected. First off, we got to start with our data set here and ask ourselves, what is the business question, I'm going to air quote that, in this data set that we're interested in answering? Now, this data set here is a very famous data set. It is the Titanic data set. And I picked this data set because it is a relatively small data set, but it's very interesting from a, an exploratory data analysis perspective. That's why I use this data set in all of my courses, all of my paid online courses, for example. It teaches you a lot about how to do data analyses. Some folks might be saying, well, Dave, why don't you use a marketing data set or a human resources data set or a finance data set? Those are all legitimate questions. The only problem is, is that those are all very domain specific. What I want to teach is the general concepts that any professional can then take and use with their HR data or their financial data or their marketing data. So not surprisingly, one advantage of using this data set, the Titanic data set, is that everyone's familiar with the problem, which is, unfortunately, there were folks that perished on the Titanic. And this column right here, the survived column, gives you a one if the passenger survived and a zero if they did not. So not surprisingly, the high-level business question that we're going to be looking at throughout this tutorial series is, what pieces of data are highly associated with survival? That's the business question that we're going to answer, that we're going to try and answer with our exploratory data analyses. Now, throughout the series, we might break down into a sub-question. For example, we'll take a look at age in particular later on, for reasons that will become clear later on, and that'll be like a sub-question. Uh, what, what factors are associated with ages? That's definitely something we're gonna be interested in. That's a sub-question that then rolls up to the high-level business question of what factors, as evidenced by the data, are highly associated with survival. Okay, so now we have our business question. Great. First up, we say, look, we've got a collection of data here. We've got you know some columns of data, and I'm not gonna go through what any of these mean. If you're already familiar with the data set and what they mean, that's totally okay. You're still gonna get value from this series. If you don't know much about the data set, that's the best because we're doing exploratory data analyses. However, the one thing that we do know is that we want to understand how the rest of the data in this data set is associated with survival. That's our overarching business question that guides our analyses. So first up, well, let's just go left to right, okay? We're doing exploratory data analysis. Let's assume that 
we can infer a little bit of what's going on in the data just by the column names, the column headers. Totally reasonable. You're going to see that all the time in the real world. So we know this is passenger ID. So if you're familiar with it, obviously, or if you're familiar with the concept of an ID column, this is an identifier. So in the United States, for example, uh, citizens of the U.S. have an identifier. It's called a social security number. It's a unique identifier for each you know, citizen of the United States, same idea here. But if we didn't know that passenger ID was an identifier column, we could actually perform an analysis on this column and derive some insight. And in fact, the way I'm, what I'm gonna show you, you're gonna actually understand why this column is likely an identifier. So, but let me, let me zoom in on the data first. Doo, 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 doo. So just so you can see a little better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at passenger ID, column A. And we're going to do a very quick analysis on this column all up. We're going to explore it. And how we're going to do that is we're going to use the Mighty Analysis tool pack. So we click on Data here in the Data ribbon. And we move over to the Data Analysis option here. And we click that. And that brings up Dialog. And there's a ton of really awesome things that you can do with this. For example, you can do regression analysis. I teach a course that explains how to do regression analysis in Excel to folks with no technical background. And I use this particular option, it is awesome. Okay, but for this particular analysis, what we're interested in is the descriptive statistics option. So that's the one we're going to select here. So we click on it, highlight it in blue, click okay, and we get another dialog. And the dialog says, okay, you need to give me an input range. What are the cells of data that you want me to analyze with descriptive statistics? And what we know is we want to do column A. So we'll just do boop, column A here. And then we know that we got a label in the first row. So we'll just go ahead and click that. And then we want the output in this worksheet. So let's just go ahead and go over here. Oops. Click the button there, and let's just go ahead and put it do, 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 in N2, let's say. N2, that's where we're going to put it. So we're going to do column A. We're going to do output range N2. And then we're going to go ahead and do summary statistics here. Click the check that. And everything looks good. And we just click OK. And we chug away here. And what we get here is some output for the passenger ID column, some descriptive statistics or summary statistics. And this is wildly useful stuff, okay? So first and foremost, what we wanna do is take a look at the count of values. Without even scrolling to the, the bottom of the table, what this tells us is that there are 891 rows. There are 891 values in the passenger ID column. Sweet, that's good. That gives us a lot of information about what's going on. How many pieces of data do we have? 891, excellent. So what we need to do here is then take a look at some of these other things and see what's going on. Now this is, what next is interesting is taking a look at the range. The range is simply the maximum value found and you subtract off the minimum value. This is super interesting because what this tells us is that, okay, we have 891 rows, we have 891 pieces of data and the minimum value that we have is one and the maximum value is 891. And we have a range of 890 as a result, which tells us that, hmm, okay, this is, this is kind of interesting. If we had just a number that was kind of random-ish, so something like revenue or somebody's age on the Titanic or how much they paid for their ticket, you wouldn't see something so closely associated with the raw amount of rows that you have. So if we scroll back over, what we can confirm here is that, oh yeah, it looks like this is just what is known as a monotonically increasing number. Notice that we got 60, 61, 62, 63, so forth. Okay, but even if I didn't look at that, I can tell from this output here that there's something fishy going on in this data. It's, it's unlikely that a typical numeric piece of data in business analysis is gonna have 891 rows with a minimum value of one and a maximum value of 891. Okay, so 
That's interesting. Let's, let's contrast this with another analysis. So we know this is a numeric column. It's not a useful numeric col column probably because it's just an identifier, but it's a numeric column. So we can use this technique of descriptive statistics on numeric columns of data. Now, strictly speaking, this is encoded as a numeric column. It's ones and zeros. However, we know a priori, as part of our business question, that in fact, this is actually not really a numeric variable because it's simply a yes, no. Did the person survive? Yes, they have a one. If the person perished, unfortunately, then it's a zero. So we know that this is actually a categorical piece of data. It's got categories, survival or not survival. It's not actually numbers. We can take a look at this particular um, column of data now. And let's do an analysis on that on P-Class and kind of explore it and see what's going on. So once again, we go up to the ribbon, we fire up the data analysis tool pack, and we want to do descriptive statistics. This time, though, we're going to go ahead and click on column C here, and we're going to change the output range and keep everything else the same. And let's go ahead and put that in column Q2, or cell Q2, let's say. Let's start the output there. And then we click OK. And then we've got P class. OK, so once again, we got something interesting going on here. So notice that we've got a mode. Notice that over here, the mode didn't really exist. It would, couldn't be calculated. And if you're not familiar, what the mode is, is it says, look, out of all these numeric values, which one is the most frequently occurring? And notice that this one is a mode of three, which is interesting because notice over here, we couldn't calculate it because every piece, every piece of data was different. Every piece of data was different, right? It was 62, 63, 64, 65, 66. There wasn't any value that happened more often than any other. So mode couldn't be calculated, but notice over here that it can be calculated. That's really interesting. And then if we go once again, we say, okay, there's 891 rows. Great, and we say, oh, look at the range. The range is two, and we have a minimum value of one and a maximum value of three. This is interesting. Notice that we see some similarities between P-class and passenger ID in terms of the range of maximum value, right? That they seem to be well-defined. But notice that a big difference is that mode is not calculated over here because every value is unique. Whereas over here we say, oh no, look, three is by far and away the most common value. So if we scroll back over to the table and just kind of eyeball it, what this tells us is, is that mm, this is a number column to be sure the way it's encoded, but maybe it's not really a number column because what, we, what it's telling us is that we have a small number of values. And the easiest way to do that, of course, is also to check the filter in Excel. You just click on that and you say, okay, I've only got three distinct values available in this thing. So that's probably an indicator that this is actually a categorical variable, which kind of makes some sense if we think about the context, which is this is the Titanic data set, and the P class probably represents what class of ticket did the passenger have, first class, second class, third class. And notice how I didn't need the data dictionary, I didn't need a business subject matter expert to tell me what this means, I can use these techniques and just a little bit of knowledge about the data to kind of infer maybe what's going on. And that's kind of the heart, one of the hearts. One of the hearts? <laughs> okay. One of the ideas, how about that, of exploratory data analysis. Next up, we're not gonna look at name, obviously, because that's not numeric. We're not gonna look at sex because that's not numeric. Let's take a look at age. That's probably a pretty interesting thing for us to look at. We're gonna go ahead and look at the age column here, column F. So once again, we'll go up to the data uh, ribbon here. We'll go to the data analysis tool pack. We'll click on descriptive statistics and we're gonna swap out column F for column C. And then let's go ahead and put our output uh, T cell T2, okay? And we we'll keep everything else the same, right? We want our summary statistics and we know we have a label in the first row. Boom, okay. Now this, this, this is cool, right? This is where this is where the analysis tool pack really starts coming into it, its its own and helping you understand, helping you explore columns of numeric data. So here we have the age column, and notice that the count is not 891. 
that tells us that we're missing data. And we're missing quite a bit because you notice that we have 891 total rows of data in as verified by the count here. And we can see that for P class anyway, because P class has no missing values, but we can see here we have 714. So we're missing well over what? 170 rows of data? Uh, 177 rows of data? Yeah, 177 rows of data. <laughs> so we're missing a lot of data here in the H column. That's the first thing that this tells us, which is problematic because missing values in, when you're doing business analytics are not uncommon. And unfortunately, typically there's no way for you to rectify them because if they're not in a database or they're not in a computer system or they're not in a spreadsheet, there's no way for you to go out, go out and collect the information. So this is super interesting. Now, what we've got here is a more of a typical kind of situation that you see with the numeric data in business analysis, which is we've got a range of values. Notice how our minimum age is 0.42. So we'll assume that that's in years, obviously, because of the name of the column. And maximum is 80. And then we can see the range is pretty high. And then what we can see here is like our median age, which is like if you take all 714 age values, the median is, and you arrange them in ascending order, right, from lowest to highest, the one that's right in the very center, the 50th percentile, the halfway point in that sorted list of numbers, that's the median, which is 28. And the most frequently occurring value is 24 years of age. And notice that we now can calculate a mean that's probably, <clears throat> excuse me, a mean or an average. That's just a fancy way of saying the average, which is interesting, which is 29.669, or excuse me, 29.699 years of age. We're gonna explore this in a later video, probably video three, using a histogram, which is a data visualization that you use for numeric data to kind of understand what's going on with the range of values. But this is a good first step. It tells us a lot. It tells us that we're missing quite a bit of data. We've got ages ranging from less than a year old all the way up to 80 years old. And we've got some measures of like, well, if prototypically, you know, if we just had to guess about the age of a passenger on the Titanic, what would we guess based on the data that we have? And we would say, well, they're probably in the range of, you know, 28 to 30 years old or so on average. And a lot of folks around 24 years of age were on the Titanic as based on the data set that we have. What I would encourage you to do is go to the GitHub and grab the files, grab the Excel files, and perform this analysis on the SIBSPA and PARCH and FAIR columns, because those are the remaining numeric columns, and look for the kinds of things that I looked at. For example, is this really a numeric variable? Is this, is this really a numeric variable? Because notice that P class, for example, when we looked at that, wasn't actually a numeric variable. It was actually a categorical variable just encoded with numbers. So we always want to be cognizant of that for SIBSPA, that's why I, why I pronounce it, PARCH, and FAIR. So I'd really encourage you to do the analyses as homework using the analysis tool pack. Also, this is the first video in the series. When I record number two, I will update the video and it will show up in one of these two places. And as I mentioned before, you can get the GitHub from the description below. And if you're interested in learning more about KPI analysis, analyzing data over time, you can go ahead and check out uh, the video up here. It's a good time to click it now if you're interested. Okay, that's it for video number one. I'm looking forward to this series. It's gonna be awesome. Until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.